All right, we got 25, which is pretty good. We'll get started. Okay, well, everybody, good morning, and thank you for attending today as part of our meeting. The past wind is the past year, as most of you know, has been a whirlwind of activity, especially for OSPA CME committee and for the board. At the onset of COVID last year, we were told by experts not to expect much of anything legislatively because everyone, governmental offices, will be absorbed in dealing with COVID and they won't have the bandwidth to address our issues. We ignored that and we decided to be part of the solution. OSPA was the first to propose that AAPA encourage state chapters to ask their governors to suspend current PA rules for supervision, chart review, and other requirements in order to allow PAs more flexibility in responding to patient needs during the crisis. OSPA then made this request to Governor Brown, who placed our request into a bill which was passed last summer during the special emergency session. Right after the last conference, we started meeting virtually with senators and representatives to discuss all the bills that we were submitting. We often met virtually with two to four legislators per week. We work with many stakeholders through the year, including the Oregon Medical Board, the Oregon Medical Association, and family practice physicians, and others. It has been a very busy and a very productive year. It's been a pleasure to work with this A-team group. This group has worked above and beyond the normal duties of their positions. And we have some well-deserved awards, which we'll present at the end of this meeting. For now, I wanna turn this over to our immediate past president, president Sage Davis Rice. And this time I warned you, unlike last year. <laughs> he did warn me, unlike last year. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming to the meeting, the membership meeting. Uh, we appreciate all of our members and uh, the work that you have done with us for the last year and um, that your support by being members has allowed us to do as well. Um, essentially, what I want to uh, highlight in my very brief talk today is uh, the work of the board um, and the committees of the board. So um, the board has worked really hard this last year on the legislative um, agenda and, the, and also um, on many aspects of PA practice in our community. Um, and, uh, and that work is often unrecognized uh, because it's quiet. And, uh, and so as the executive board, we want to make sure that, that the board members and the committee members are recognized uh, for the many hours that they donate uh, to, to PA advocacy um, for Oregon PAs. Um, we've had outstanding service from all of our committee chairs and co-chairs um, for the last year. And that's, that's not different. Um, every year we have outstanding commitment from our committee chairs and co-chairs and the members of our committees. But what is different about this last year, of course, is that it was all in the face of a global pandemic, uh, which was an extraordinary burden for those of our profession, um, not only personally, like everyone in the world, but professionally as well. And, and the work of the committees uh, and the board members um, and the chairs and co-chairs was, um, as Ben said, above and beyond. Um, and then the, I also want to recognize uh, all of our membership and all PAs in the state of Oregon for their amazing service to our community, to our patients. And I think that the world has recognized um, frontline workers, but that recognition wanes. And I think it's important for, um, for OSPA to continue to recognize the work that you do and how necessary it is. Um, and finally, I want to make sure that we take a few minutes to recognize Ben. His leadership has been invaluable uh, 
sometimes we have to hold him back a little. Uh, we might have to moderate him just a moment or two, um, but his um, energy is unflagging and his commitment to PA advocacy is unparalleled. Uh, he, he always thinks about what is good for the PA profession um, and pushes all of us to think about that all the time. And, um, and we also have uh, given him a small token of appreciation which he better not have opened before this moment. I did not. Lisa looked at it, but she wouldn't let me see it. She kept awesome. it in the back. So, um, so you can open it now. A small piece right. of our appreciation for you. Um, and I think the, I think this is the closest thing to your heart, Ben. But um, the the biggest piece of print on it should be you made a difference. That is close. That is special to me. And it says OSPA president 2019 to 2021, Ben Johnson, PAC. Thank you for believing in our mission, offering invaluable leadership and support. It says you made a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn this back over to you. All right. Well, I got next up Brian on the agenda. Our our current president elect will take over as president as of Monday. Thank you, Ben. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, how do you follow up those words that Sage just provided? I think that was um, that was perfect. It was eloquent. I think you know I have expressed to the board and expressed to many people in my circle about how impressed I have been with Ben in his presidency and what he has done. I think um, I like when, when Sage mentioned that we had to hold him back sometimes. And, and honestly, it was always out of, a, out of a, a good place. You know, he's just anxious and excited and passionate. And I don't, um, I don't intend to even come close to replicating the passion that Ben showed during his presidency, but do hope to, um, to take a lot of that and learn from that and, and move forward into uh, my presidency starting at, after this conference. Um, I'm excited to represent everybody and, um, and really want to um, be open and um, available if there's questions, concerns, if there's things that you feel OSPA should be doing or needs to be focusing on, you know, please reach out to us. We really, we really appreciate that. Um, I do want to add one more thing because Sage is humble and she didn't mention herself, but I will say Sage is finishing up nine years on the board, which is pretty remarkable. The board has changed a lot um, for those that aren't, that haven't been a part of it or haven't seen it, just the dynamics and the culture has improved greatly. And um, I would put almost all of that on Sage. Um, she probably would deny it and say it's a team effort, and, and it is to a certain degree, but she is fantastic, and I, um, you know, I remember my very first board meeting when I attended, there was, um, there was debate, there was argument, there was discussion, and Sage reached out to me literally an hour after the meeting just to see how I felt and how I, how I handled it and, and how things were going, and and, you know, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Sage, I'm not sure I would have, you know, wanted to keep pushing forward, and and things have just gotten better and better and she has been a major leader in this realm and so i do want to make sure that we we recognize sage as well and and thank her for everything that she has done i second that thank you it you're not wrong it is a team effort <laughs> <laughs> but i appreciate you guys and uh, it has been an honor to serve And she's and she's still I still have her text her phone number so she's not getting away too far. We know where to find her. All right, so the next thing I have on the agenda here is kind of an optional thing, but I'm not sure how many board members we have here. I, I would like to have an introduction of any of our board members um, who are present and if they would like to say a few words or committee chairs. I do know, Ben, that some people are having a hard time getting into the meeting. Um, uh, okay. I know. So, so we may have some people that haven't popped in, but um, those that are here, please speak up. I see Elisa just 
opt in. Hi, I'm Elisa Gifford. Um, I'm an outgoing director at large and a House of Delegate representative, and I'm also the uh, co-chair for the Membership and Communications Committee. And it's been, I've been on the board for about three years and just absolutely love serving with everybody and the work that we get done. Do we have anybody else who would like to pop in? Yeah, I am. I don't know if you, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I just have my headphones in, so I didn't know if it would translate. I'm uh, Katie Volk. I've been the secretary for the last four years and practiced family med in Madras. Um, and then it's just been an honor. It's been wild because my time on the board has correlated with uh, having a little guy who's three and I've been on the board for four years. So um, I feel like it's been a challenging time frame for me, but it's been such a period of growth. Um, and it really has been awesome working with this team and pushing, you know, pushing so hard to move the profession forward and to protect the profession. Um, so it's just been a, a true honor and I'll definitely be back. Thank you. Do we have anybody else aside from Lisa? Because Lisa's next anyhow. She's here. Uh, this is Kate Grace. This is my Hi, first. Kate. Hey, Ben. This is my first uh, OSPA conference in a few years after diligently con continuing to attend them for many years. I was the past um, OSPA president for two years. I've been doing locums in remote Alaska for the last five years and have just come back to um, where I essentially started my practice in very rural America and halfway Oregon. So I'm looking forward to becoming involved again. Great. Welcome back. Thanks. I've known, I've known Kate for a long time. Anybody else we have? Okay. Lisa, are you on here? because you're up next. Hmm. Sage, can you text with Lisa and see if you can find out if she's having any difficulty? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we have Taylor and Debbie do their uh, That's intro? Good. That's what I think we'll move on. Taylor, Debbie? You read my mind, Sage. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Taylor Sarman, my colleague Debbie Kresge is on the call as well, and we are your lobbyists uh, through the legislative process. So your eyes and ears uh, in the Capitol. It's all virtual right now, but at some point we'll get back into the building um, and uh, be there advocating for you all on the issues that you all want to work on. Uh, I'll say a little bit about myself uh, to buy some time while Lisa gets on the call to talk about all the great things that you achieved. Uh, last session and what you're working on next session, but I was a legislative staffer for almost four years um, and for the chair of the House Education Committee and then made the transition to lobbying and I've been lobbying for about the last two years and the last year um, have had the honor and privilege of representing you all in the legislative process and so excited that Debbie and I both get to keep working with you all your board is amazing folks to work with and of course enjoy working with all of you uh, members as well as we connect you with legislators uh, to really raise the voice of your profession uh, through the legislative process because it is so important. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Debbie to do a quick introduction um, for, uh, for herself. Good morning. Please. Yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Um, my name is David Koreski and I work with Taylor and I'm the other part of your lobbying team in Salem. Um, I have a history kind of like Taylor's. I was legislative staff, but I'm just much older and longer history. Um, I was legislative staff and chief of staff for the speaker. And then I left to become a lobbyist for Portland State University. And um, I worked for Congresswoman Hooley for a while. And then I went back and worked, I spent the past um, four years working for the governor and assembling the state budget, which I did that for two cycles, very interesting. And I also worked on higher education issues and housing and human services issues. There are a lot of Medicaid issues. So, um, and now I'm out with Taylor and I work to support you all. And we had, as Ben mentioned, we had a really great session despite the little hiccup at the end. And um, it was really exciting to watch um, 
a bill that you all had worked on for so long kind of to help take you over that last part of the finish line. So um, we are working with your board right now to ensure that we have another successful session for the, um, the short session, which starts in February. And it's nice to meet all of you. Lisa should be getting on in a minute. She's our GAC chair. And um, even though, as you know, I think we've jumped, yelled and jumped up and down enough for you to know that we've passed the PA modernization, HB 3036, signed by the governor. And does that mean it's all done? Well, it doesn't, um, because as Taylor and them know, um, statute is one thing, but now the rules have to be made. And if we don't watch the way the rules are being made, they could potentially um, not cause things to not develop the way we, we, vision, we envision. So we are working closely with the Oregon Medical Board, Sage and Taylor and, and Lisa and I had a meeting, was it last week? week before maybe with them and they're 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 giving their it, it is going great we have a great relationship with them that we fostered over the past year they we've set up so we're having monthly meetings with them as these rules are being made they're even presenting us with the rules before they're taking them to their committee um they're very interested in what we have to say and so far so far, everything is going great, but the number one thing is we're keeping an eye on it and we're making sure that we're in the room. Lisa, are you here yet? I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> Not really, I don't, I don't usually she, do that. She still can't get in. I'm gonna send her the link again. Okay, yeah. It's, I, I'm hearing that there's kind of a glitch with this meeting that if you don't have a Zoom account, you might not Correct. be able to access it. Yeah, oh. I had to create a Zoom account in order to come in. I did not know that. Um, so that was an issue. Um, I could do the membership thing, though, if we're still waiting. Yes, go ahead, please. Please listen. All right. Um, so the, um, we, as the Membership and Communications Committee, um, decided to redo the PA of the year. And so it is our pleasure to announce the PA of the year award to Juliana Bernstein. Um, I wanted to read what was submitted for her. Um, she had lots of nominations, so I tried to combine them. But when I think about a PA demonstrating exceptional service in medicine, I don't have to look far for an outstanding example. While I have only known Juliana Bernstein for a little over two years, I'm astounded at what she has managed to accomplish in this short period of time. Julie identified several years ago that OHSU was sorely lacking in its ability to and to describe the role of APPs in the hospital, and there was a significant amount of inconsistencies in their duties, pay, and, res and representation on institutional committees and in leadership. She began the uphill process of trying to better describe the role of APPs in the institution and helped create unity and representation for APPs at large. Her hard work culminated in a creation of new leadership positions through the Dean Office. Julie has been an integral part of clinical education at the OHSU PA program as well as OHSU Medical School and continues to actively shape the curriculum for geriatrics block for the OHSU PA program. She has been actively involved in the Oregon Geriatric Society and has chaired and served on education committee to help bring high quality geriatric CME to Oregon based clinicians. In 2015, she identified the need for inpatient geriatric care at OHSU and helped design and implement an inpatient geriatric medicine service, which has grown to now six member team, which includes MDs, NPs, and PAs. She is a dedicated, thoughtful, compassionate clinician who provides exemplary care for, all, for our older adults. On a more personal level, Julie's professional example has had a significant impact on me. While physician assistants are often thought as an essential member of the medical team, we are often not considered in professional and leadership realms. We are often overlooked for memberships in committees and quality improvement initiatives. Julie's tireless dedication to elevating the role of APPs has been felt across the institution and has helped create visibility at the leadership level. She has personally inspired me to apply for roles that have not been traditionally held by APPs. I believe that a leader is not only one defined by what she accomplishes, but also how she enables others to accomplish their goals as well. Julie's work has permanently changed the trajectory of APPs and her hard work will be felt for years to come. So it's with my pleasure to congratulate Juliana Bernstein as OSPA's PA of the Year. Congrats. All right. And I believe she's on if she wants to show her face. Yes. I'm here. I don't know if anybody can see me or hear me. We can see you and we can hear you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. This is a huge honor. And I just want to thank 
that person for writing my entire life out, I guess, and um, and uh, and thank the uh, members of the board. Um, this is a real honor. I think when that person said that um, things have been uh, at times uh, a little bit um, hard for PAs at OHSU, I feel that acutely, and I think that's um, to me the driver of of the role that I'm in now, and um, and I hope to continue to um, bring PAs more visibility and um, and more recognition for the incredible work that our, um, I think we have 192 PAs at OHSU. Um, and so I like to think that I, if I can, I'm sort of accepting this on, on their behalf because that's really why I'm doing what I'm doing. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, that said, on, on that note, another thing OSPA is trying to do is to build a committee. We only have a few people on it so far for, um, practice level management. A lot of nurses, a lot of NPs are, uh, as we know, in into management and practice level. And we would like to have a committee that supports PAs um, in those positions or moving into those positions. So if anybody is interested in that committee, please just send a uh, just send a note to uh, uh, to our management um, on the on the website. What's what's the link on that? It's uh, the email. Brian, do you know? Um, I think you could even just email it at info at Oregon, um, PA org. Exactly. And, um, and we'll get you connected. They're going to have a meeting next month. Um, Brian, you want to go with the racial equity task force? Sure. I'll um, fill in everyone that, you know, when we had this meeting last year, we had just created this new task force and hadn't um, really gotten things off the ground and running at that time, but we've been really productive over the last year. We've met pretty regularly and have created and done quite a bit. And so I just wanted to give everyone an update on what's going on. Um, one of the first things uh, I'd like to direct people to if they haven't noticed yet is there is a racial, um, a racial equity task force um, uh, link on our website where we have some information. We have, um, we've, um, we've collected several like free anti-racist CME opportunities for anybody that's interested in kind of seeing some of that and, and learning more about those topics to try to pr um, provide to our membership so people can explore some of those issues as they um, you know evaluate their own practice, their own communities and, and kind of how things are going. Um, the other thing that we're in the process of starting and we've gotten a little bit going is um, a mentoring program, basically providing um, mentoring and help to um, to pre-PA students largely who, um, who may come from disadvantaged backgrounds and might need a little support with, um, you know, um, interview prepping or, uh, or um, CASPA application type stuff. And we've coordinated with um, a, a PA student at OHSU who has already sort of built something out for the OHSU PA program and are looking to expand it to all the, the PA programs in the state. That's kind of next up in, in our list of things to do. Uh, a couple other things we've done that have been really um, fun and really engaging are some school outreach programs where we've had some of our member, our committee members go and speak to um, high schools and just talk about what the PA program is and sort of put it on people's radar so they know this is an option. And then we can also promote our mentoring programs and things like that to, you know, get in, get in early and, and get the interest in the, in the profession starting out at a um, younger age. Um, Few other, uh, one other big thing that has been really um, fun and, and interesting and inspiring is we've connected with um, WAPA and CAPA, so Washington and California's PA, PA groups, and have had a few meetings to discuss kind of what they're working on and, and trying to um, work together as sort of like a West Coast um, group and, um, and coordinate our efforts and things like that. So, you know, we've had a lot of student involvement, which has been really cool, and um, and we're really hoping to kind of build our um, career PA involvement as well. So, you know, if any of you are interested or curious or would like more information about what we're doing or would like to even just attend a meeting, you're obviously welcome. Just, just shoot us an email. Um, let us know. If you know anybody who may find this interesting or, be, um, or want to participate, you know, point them our direction as well because um, the, the student involvement is is awesome, but it would be it would be great to also have um, career um, PAs involved as well. And then lastly, you know, any feedback that anybody has about what we've been doing and um, what we should be focused on and, and, and moving towards, 
we're obviously very open and um, wanting to hear from that as well. So thank you. Thank you. Um, is uh, Lisa on yet? Lisa is. Yes, I am. Hi, Lisa. Sorry Hello. about that. We didn't, we didn't know that you had to sign up for things. Yeah, and all of my professional meetings are done via Teams. So my name is Lisa Hayes. I'm your Government Affairs Committee Chair. Um, just to give you a little bit of information, first of all, a huge celebration over the passage of our House Bill 3036, which is the PA Modernization Bill. We are continuing to monitor as the Oregon Medical Board develops rules to implement the PA Modernization uh, Bill. We are also working to add an additional PA to the Oregon Medical Board. Uh, we attempted to do that this last year and didn't make it through, but we did get the modernization through. The other things that we have on the agenda to work on this year is to increase the number of visits and the length of time that PAs can take care of workers' compensation patients. Right now, we have a very, very short window during which we can take care of workers' compensation patients, and we're looking to extend that to at least be equal to that of nurse practitioners. We will be working with the Oregon Health Authority to add PAs to the Oregon Health Authority Medical Liability Insurance Subsidy Program for rural providers, and always looking to um, expand PA practice in Oregon to, to reach parity with nurse practitioners. We think that that's exceedingly important. Um, the name change, big, big deal from a, a national perspective. However, at this time, AAPA is not quite ready for our state associations to move forward with that name change. But as soon as they are ready for us, we will be ready to do that as well. We are also continuing to work with the Oregon Health Authority to make sure that physician assistants are able to order uh, durable medical equipment for patients, as well as sign home health orders. Those are some changes that have been made on the national level and haven't quite trickled down into the Oregon rules yet. And then of course, we will continue to monitor Salem for any bills that are submitted that have the potential of having an impact on PA practice in the state of Oregon. Very good, thank you. The one thing we have left on here, and let's see, uh, <clears throat> CME committee report, uh, AJ and Heather. Hi. Hello. Hi, AJ. Uh, just congratulate every, <laughs> Can I'm gonna go to a space where there's fewer kids because I was uh, yeah. um, putting my groceries away which is why it's so great to have virtual a virtual option because you can live your life and attend a conference at the same time i was just at a, a um, soccer game watching everything about uh, the heart and the kidneys so that was really fun so i'm just going to open my document here so i'd like to report that we have had a very successful um conference so far that we've been able to uh, get about 77 people online at this conference and we've had 133 register. We have a total of about 28 CME uh, credit hours, I believe when I did my count and a lot of those are pre-recorded so we can watch them at our convenient time. These also, the ones that are being live are also recorded. So we really like that option that you can watch any missed presentations. It does give you the advantage of having more CME available to you than if we just did the traditional in-person uh, with no recordings. So that's been nice. Um, compared to if you want a frame of reference last year, we also did a four day virtual conference um, with morning live sessions and afternoon recorded ones. And that was a total of 20, 25 credit hours. 
Uh, last year we had 123 attendees and we also had an additional 62 students who logged in. Uh, additionally, we had uh, eight credit hours that were offered throughout the quarter, uh, each quarter at the, um, the rest of the 2020 year and, and part of 2021, which was another nice option. And going forward, we do look forward to having a um, in-person option at the Seaside Convention Center. That facility is very well equipped to handle uh, a large crowd to allow continuing um, measures that we can take if the pandemic is still happening, which we're gonna hope for the best. Uh, it also has a lot of options for um, separate tracks and it has a lot of high tech facilities that allow us to record and live stream. So we're also hoping to continue the virtual option as we move forward with our CME conferences so that we can cater to every um, situation, everybody's um, priorities uh, and allow as much attendance as possible. Additionally, we are hoping to continue to record these lectures and presentations so that if you miss a presentation or, just some, or something at the beach just draws your attention, you can still go and have fun at the beach but not feel like you're really missing out on all of these conference opportunities. And um, in the future, we also would like to look at the timing. I know that Ben, you had mentioned that we would like to really truly investigate is early September a good time for us to hold this conference or can we find a time in the summer that might work for more people? This conference is really for the membership. It's a way for us to connect and to get CME to kind of develop professionally. And so it, it does kind of mean that we need to do it at a time where most people can attend, where we get the largest interest. Um, so if I recall, we were gonna send out um, a, a survey, right? So yeah, that we, we can really assess that. Yeah, we did send out a survey. And I think I, I answered it even. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go back and look at it yet, but yeah. You know, okay. I mean, the question is, there's pros and cons. I mean, earlier right. has pros, but then, you know, some people argue, well, everybody's going on vacation, but then maybe you want to make a vacation at the at the beach. Yeah, and, and as we're, you know, the way I think about it is once we figure out a time that is really ideal, and we, you know, we always want to continue to investigate that time, but if we're consistent with it, it allows people to plan ahead. And, mm -hmm. and if we can put it at a time when it really does not interfere with a lot of the things going on. I know right now it interferes a lot with first days of school and um, those with families have a hard time taking their kids out of school to make this a trip, which we all kind of like to do, or a lot of people like to do. Some people like to leave their kids at home and not have <laughs> any distractions. So. We definitely want to cater to the majority. We want to cater to um, people's interests and, um, and situations. So I, I think continuing to ask. Oh, and we have finals going on with people taking tests. Oh, and that's, we forget about those tests, guys. When you, you will too. It won't be forever. <laughs> but we want to take that into account too, with the, um, the, the situations of our students and where they're at in their education. So that's, that's a very good point of view to bring up. Uh, anything else that you want to hear about? Is there any questions? Uh, I think we're all pretty optimistic about moving forward and continuing to have these conferences and, and the silver lining to COVID here is that we, we really have um, ironed out a lot of the wrinkles, I think for virtual so that we can continue with that option, which I think also uh, a lot of people appreciate. So, Heather, did you want anything? Nope, you got it all covered. <laughs> all right, I'm going to say a couple, Perfect. and then we'll open it up to hear if we have any questions from our, our, our uh, members that are on. Um, I ran for president on the platform of passing OTP, later called PA modernization, and that's something, as I've said before, I couldn't do by myself. Together, we've done what none of us could actually do alone. We've made historical changes in Oregon law that will have a positive impact on the future of our profession and the growth of our profession. This is one example of why organizations such as OSPA are so important to those that they represent. But these organizations are only as strong as their membership. It's easy to not see, if we, as we've said a couple of times, everything that your organization does for you. All of Sage and I have tried to increase that communication. I think we've done well with that. Um, but 
such as protecting the profession from intentional or unintentional law or rule changes of others um, res and responding to those as they arise. Uh, just a couple of the important tasks that OSPA has ahead of us include monitoring working with the OMB as we've talked about during the rulemaking process on HB 3036. And as we said, we're currently meeting with the OMBA monthly and reviewing proposed rules. Also working with the OMA and legislators to establish a point of parity, which I would like to see for PAs with other providers. During discussions over the past year with members of the Oregon Medical Board, the Oregon Medical Association, and the Association of Family Practice Physicians, I don't know if I said that right, um, they have all expressed understanding during meetings that PAs do need parity. At the and at the conclusion of the last meeting with the OMA, the OMA agreed to future discussions on this issue. Now, of course, everyone here should be a member since it's a membership meeting, and I thank you for that. As I said, you, you are OSPA. But if you know PAs who are not OSPA members, please encourage them to join because the larger we are, the more we can accomplish. Colleagues, it's been an honor to serve as your president for the past two years, truly. It has also been a pleasure to work with our board, our GAC and other committees, including CME. Each of these do important volunteer work for OSPA members and for our profession. They deserve to be recognized. Brian and Sage and I have said many times we feel that we don't really give as much recognition as we really want to, because we know it's deserved. In 2021, due to PA modernization, COVID-19, social issues in our world, two of these groups put in much more work than would ever be expected normally. These were tense times. On one occasion, Brian called me a redneck. In acknowledgement, take it there, right? In acknowledgement of performance above and beyond normal expectations and to mark their contribution for protecting and advancing the PA profession in Oregon, including their part in making PA modernization a reality, the OSPA Executive Committee has awarded plaques to the 2021 OSPA Board of Directors and the 2020-21 GAC Committee, chaired by Lisa Hayes. So now I tried to... Uh, distribute those, get it backwards. I tried to distribute those plaques and I think I got them all out or mailed or delivered. Um, Lisa, do you have your plaque? Have you opened yours? Some people open theirs and that's okay. It wasn't the plan. I have either. opened it, but I okay. put it back in its bubble wrap and oh. in its box because I'm traveling this week. Okay. All right. Because I was going to read it to you and tell you that it said SB 3036 just to see the look on your face, but you already read it. I can tell you what there says for the uh, Governmental Affairs Committee, and if anybody has one they want to hold up, that'd be great. It says, presented on behalf of the OSPA Executive Committee and the OSPA membership in recognition and appreciation of outstanding and distinguished commitment in protecting and advancing the PA profession and key participation in passing the OSPA 2021 PA Modernization Bill, HB 3036, in the face of a worldwide pandemic. So I thank you all. And uh, if anybody hasn't opened theirs, you can open it. Now, yeah. hey, thank you, Ben. But for I told the you record, were, for the I record, told, I told Sage you weren't getting one. Ben, for or the her. record, I had I never did call you a redneck, but you keep <laughs> making that you keep making that joke, and I may be I ordering have. a plaque for you with that on it. <laughs> redneck. <laughs> all right. Well, with that, it's well deserved, and I hope it marks. It serves to mark. There, there's one right there. Hold yours up, Katie. All right. And I hope it serves to mark the special accomplishments we made this year with everybody's help and their extra work. All right. So moving forward, members, board, and committee members, I sincerely thank you for the opportunity for me to be a part of this group and for all that we have accomplished. Um, one thing I want to mention before we open it up is that um, some of you know and others don't that um, there's going to be held over the next month or two a special election for the AAPA president-elect. I don't know exactly what happened, but the one who was supposed to become president in July didn't do so, and um, the president-elect was moved up to president, and they're holding a special election. So I'm going to plan on applying as a candidate for that. 
So uh, any support would be appreciated. And I thought I'd mention that here. Moving on, do we have okay. any so, questions? So what, yes. so what that means, everybody, is pay attention to your emails when you get an AAPA special election uh, chance to vote. You may okay. you you will likely recognize a name on there. We're gonna rock. Oregon's gonna rock the vote this year, right? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and that'll give Sage an opportunity to serve as immediate past president once removed. Advisory Console role day. only. <laughs> Advisory only. <laughs> Advisory only. Do we have any members that wanted to make any <laughs> motions, have any comments, have any questions? Yeah, I have something I could say. Go this is Heather, Heather Tong. And um, including PAs, of course. And so um, I think that kind of the issues of uh, provider wellness and um, having ways to have some peer support when we are not able to get together is something that is kind of like really important. And um, I, uh, I wrote something actually that um, I wrote for um, the, I'm a, I'm a medical director in a clinic. And so we have these monthly meetings with the medical director and the um, clinic directors and um, it was right when the pan when um, we started back into this surge again with COVID, and um, I was like really disappointed about it because I had taken off my mask in public and I was really happy and like it all went away again, which totally sucks. So I just thought maybe I could share it. Um, it's called. Um, Finding happiness in the midst of turmoil. Uh, we turn on the radio first thing in the morning to stay informed about the world while listening to tales of trauma and heartbreak, disaster and destruction, considering those that may be happening in our own lives, family, friends, and community. We sit and savor our coffee, gazing out the window as the day breaks on beautiful patterns of plants and sky, laughing at the antics of my cat and dog. My jaw clenches, my heart races, my shoulders hunch. It's already four o'clock and I'm about to see that patient who every person in the clinics knows the name of and wishes they didn't have to talk with and my charts aren't done. I've been gone a few days and there are 50 messages on my desktop. How could so many people need something in such a short amount of time? A provider did something inappropriate. I have to talk with them about it. I'm worried about a very ill, a very depressed, a confusingly complex patient, and wonder if I should have done something different. I'm frustrated at the slowness of change, angry about the lack of agreement about the severity and importance of dealing with COVID. I sense the stress in my coworkers. But then the next day or the next hour is different. And Emmy tells a joke. Someone passes around a birthday card for everyone to sign. The break room is all decorated in artistic, colorful pictures, and someone brought in cookies, individually wrapped, of course. We dress up for Halloween or Fourth of July. There's smiles, laughter, conversation about gardens, pets, family, life outside the clinic. I share fruits and vegetables from my garden. My patient tells me how much they appreciate the help we gave her, that she's so glad our clinic is here for her. An elderly man tells me an amazing and interesting life story. A nurse is so pleased that she's helped get a patient's blood pressure down. With dedicated multifaceted teamwork, we're able to get a patient the care they really need. We have a productive meeting where everyone's engaged. We solve puzzles and problems, offer compassion and reassurance. I feel lucky that I chose a profession which has purpose and can make a real difference in another human being's life. In fact, over years, in many people's lives. I open my window at night. There's a dream catcher hanging, 
twisting gently in the wind. It doesn't catch all the scary or startling dreams like it's supposed to. It doesn't keep me from waking up and feeling anxious or worried in the middle of the night, but I can pretend that it helps. All summer, until it's too cold, my window is open at night. I listen to the wind or the quiet, the crickets or the frogs, and the bird song in the early morning. I feel and smell the fresh air of outside. Each morning and each night, these soothe me. And I take these moments to love the feeling of peace and let it counteract the turmoil. Thanks. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you, Heather. Lovely. Do we have any other members have uh, any questions, something to say? John, how you doing? I haven't seen you for a while. It's good to see you all. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Are you in the US? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Those are all the places my wife and I have been so far. So every time we go somewhere, we buy a little piece of art and hang it on the wall. Um, I wanted to thank you all, um, Lisa, uh, especially you for your uh, extraordinary effectiveness in advocating uh, for the PA profession, but really the OSPA board too for supporting all those efforts. Um, really, it's, you know, PA modernization is a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, I think it's the most important PA legislation ever. And I'm so proud of the OSPA for uh, making it happen. Uh, I think the OSPA is functioning at its highest level ever. And it's thanks to you board members and committee members. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Thanks, John. It's good seeing you. If I could take a minute to put a plug in for our PAC. Mm -hmm. That's the money that we are able to donate to legislators that actually support what it is OSPA tries to accomplish in Salem. It is a tax deductible donation, $50 an individual, $100 per couple, I believe is still the same. And without that money, we don't have doors that open as well or as widely, I guess would be a good way to put it in Salem. So every time you add to our PAC fund, it allows us to do greater things in Salem. So please consider donating to the PAC fund. All right. Any other members or anybody have anything, questions, uh, motions, comments? It's a membership meeting. The rest of us have hogged too much of it already. Well, not hearing any. I think we're uh, we're good to go. Um, darn, what is next? Let me see. I think it's exhibitor meetings. Okay, so get to the exhibit. We have to. A lot of what we do, a lot of uh, we get a part. A lot of our income, actually, a good part of it, is from exhibitors, and we need to support them because, well, they're supporting us. So if you could go do that. Uh, might win a free registration for next year. And um, then at, I believe, 1230, Lisa and I are doing a talk about uh, PA modernization and GAC in general. So I'd be glad to see you all there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Brad. you. Bye, Bye everybody.